follow me. And here we are once again in what I call my diffuse library. This is an extension in my back garden. Illegally built, I have to say, though it's been here so long it's now de facto legal. Just that's the proof, that's looking back at my house from the shed. So I've got a couple of videos I've recorded in here before. This one was my library book torch I called Tour of My Diffuse Library. Diffuse because it doesn't really serve as a library because of a, this sort of book crisis of uh, arrangement. There isn't any. Um, and the second one was my scavenger hunt book tour tag, sorry, um, where there are some books I couldn't find. Now I don't know if it's because I don't actually own them anymore or I just couldn't find them amongst this chaos. But this week, this week followers, I hit upon a solution and it lies in this box which is going to be the ultimate unboxing. Although as I've actually tried to record this video before today, I've already unboxed so I'm cheating a bit here. Um, but just to let you know before that, there's some horrible old mould because this is a garden shed. I don't know if you can see that. Now uh, I was going to do some live spraying but again uh, having screwed up the video I've already done the spraying uh, and I use this product. Astonish Mould and Mildew Blaster. Yes, yeah, all the glamorous uh, product placement on my channel, folks. So if any other uh, rival brands of uh, mould cleanser want to sponsor me, please feel free. Uh, this was actually um, uh, recommended to me by my son. He said he used it in his student house and it was very successful. So um, any mould that works on a student house must be alright for a suburban shed, I would have thought. Uh, and just before we get into the unboxing fate, just want to show you a few things because I prepared the room uh, before uh, what's needed and I managed to clear this floor space which is sort of buried under stuff. There's a nice chessboard tile pattern if ever anyone wants to play chess or they won't come out to the shed to play chess, I don't know. But in doing so, uh, I found some interesting stuff. Look, cassette tapes. Oh god, remember them? Because I never owned a record player but I have lots of records. So, although it looks like I've just ripped these off, because that's my writing of all the tracks, um, what I did is I used to take records home to my parents' house on their sort of stereo system and record them, uh, so I could actually listen to my own records, but on cassette. Um, and I've still got them, even though I probably haven't played them in 15 years, because, you know, like, who listens to cassette tapes, right? And then I found some interesting stuff also here. Who remember? I didn't remember. But when you used to go to gigs, these, you know, you could get programs, like for a sports event. So there's The Cure, which I think was for their uh, 17 Seconds tour. And there's Stiff Little Fingers for the Go For It, which was their third album tour. But they're pretty useless. I mean, uh, apart from the fact that I've cut a review of The Cure gig out from the newspaper. How, you know, how bizarre is that? But, you know, what do you get in this programme? You know, I don't know if it cost anything or if it was free. You get some band shots and some pictures of robots and some moody silhouette shots of the band. Before Robert Smith went all goth. Um, so that's sort of pretty useless. And much the same with the Stiff Little Fingers one. So, again, lots of band shots. So they're the, they're the boys. Um, here's a bit of text, which is something I suppose. Then all the, you know, the entire tour listings, every single venue in the UK that they played, uh, of which only London would have been interesting to me, and I was there so I didn't need to know. And there's a band shot across the middle double page spread, etc, etc. So pretty redundant really. But I also found this. Selfishness. A zine. $1.75. Michael Girat's short stories with drawings by Raymond Pettibon, who did a lot of the SST uh, record label stuff. And, you know, I'm going to go back and... Oh, when's it published? 85. Um, those who follow my channel will know that, you know, Girat's book, The Consumer, is the bane of my life. I've tried for 30 years to get hold of it unsuccessfully. But here I have, admittedly in a smaller version, some of his short stories, which is what The Consumer is. So, yay. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, I'm going to read those. And then finally, something else I found that's quite interesting, this airmail letter uh, addressed to me. I, you know, I deliberately, this is from Denver, Colorado. I deliberately uh, analysed the original letter that this is replying to. 
because it's from the dead Kennedy. It's from Jello Biafra himself. There's his signature. Because when I was in my gap year, I went to uh, a lot of Eastern European states, including U Yugoslavia. They were all still under state communism then. Well, Yugoslavia was independent under Tito. And uh, on one of the churches in Yugoslavia, there was a symbol above it, which looked like the dead Kennedy's DK logo. So I photographed it and sent it to Jello. And this is what he replied. Dear DS, thank you for the photo and thoughts on Yugoslavia. We may be going there this spring, actually. So any more thoughts or information you care to provide would be most much appreciated. An appearance in Hungary doesn't look too likely, but we have a small chance of actually gaining entrance to... Dot, 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 Poland! By the way, who are you? If you have written us in the past, I've either misplaced your correspondence or gotten senile. Probably the latter. What does DS stand for? Well, yeah, that's my real name, not my Mark Nash pen name. If you had the time, we'd be happy to hear from you again. Regards, Jello Biafra. So how cool is that? So there are a few of the things I found uh, in tidying up this room, preparing it. Um, OK, let's get to the great unboxing. Won't take long because I've already opened it. And to reveal, yes, shelving. What a revolutionary solution to not having enough space in my library. Surely it can't be lime green. Surely not, Mark. Uh, indeed it is. Uh, I'm not too bothered about the colours because this being a garden shed with mould, um, I'm not, you know, I can't be aesthetically proud. Unlike Eric Carl Anderson, who revealed his beautiful new sort of purpose-built shelves in his nice new uh, house. If I lived in a house... Uh, that was big enough for shelves, and maybe I'd have more pride. But this was cheap, I think. Is it £10.99 or £21 on Amazon? That would do for me. Um, so, uh, we are now going to try and build this. Uh, DIY is not my strength. In fact, I'm a living cliche, because this is a bank holiday weekend in the UK. And what do most men apparently do on bank holidays? They do DIY, and I've been suckered into that. So here's the screws that I'm going to need. Here are the instructions. The assembly instructions. Only four panels worth of stuff. So hopefully, this isn't going to be too complicated, but I have to say uh, I'm going to stop recording at this point because uh, I don't want swearing on the video. So uh, I'm going to return, hopefully, with shelves built. And um, then we're going to sort of transfer very exciting, uh, some of these books onto these new shelves. Uh, the Amazon uh, review said it was easy to put uh, to put together. Well, I'll be the judge of that. But it did say also it didn't think it could sustain sort of serious weight on the shelves. So that probably means I'm going to do paperbacks rather than hardbacks. But again, we'll wait and see. And it'll be nice to sort of, um, you know, get reacquainted with my original filing system. Some people do, you know, alphabetical order of authors. Some do by colour scheme of the spines. Uh, I have my own way. Uh, you probably won't be surprised to hear. Um, so hopefully we can record some of that logic. If we get that far, that manage to build these damn things. Um, and I just want to show you the last thing. Look at the bow of that shelf. Uh, is that my handiwork when I put these together from Ikea? Let's have a close-up on that. Yeah, it could be. You can see the screws. That's how badly put together it is. Or is it just the weight of books? Anyway, uh, there will now be a pause uh, while I uh, try and build these things. See you soon. OK, so here we are. Uh, the good news is uh, DIY genius that I'm not. Uh, I found it remarkably easy to do, so uh, Amazon reviews were correct on that. Uh, took me about 20 minutes and all. Um, the bad news is... Look at the size of that. So this is me now kneeling down. It's tiny. Look how much space there is. So um, I reckon um, I could get about 35 books in that, which isn't going to make a dent in all of this. Completely bloody useless. Uh, it's my spinal tap moment of um, writing inches instead of feet. I'm not very good at judging uh, sizes. Uh, I have a neurological uh, problem with it. I mean, the bottom 5% of this country is spatial awareness. And there is proof. Um, so, uh, yes, let's see what we can get. Um, I'm going to put my crime fiction, for no reason, into this. So this is Kate Atkinson down there.
Okay, I can get one more book in there. I don't have any more Kate Atkinson. Um, this is most disappointing. Uh, I do have another Joe Nesbo somewhere. Don't know where it is. He's Norwegian. Karen Fossen is Norwegian. Um, Carl Heisen, the American uh, sort of ecological comedy caper author. Carol O'Connell. Will they, will she all fit in? Yes. Oh, maybe no. Please go in. Oh. No. Okay, so uh, Carol O'Connell will have to sit on top. Um, and various other crime fiction writers. Uh, Dennis Lehane. Jeffrey Deaver. Oh, I've got a few Jeffrey Diva books. Um, got room for one more. Yes, but not that. It's too fat. Richard Price's Clockers. That definitely gets pride of place. Now, I do have another Nesbo book here somewhere. God knows where. Um... Um, trying to think, yeah, it's the snowman I've got. Ah, there we are. The leopard. Oh, that means I've got the snowman as well somewhere. Um, oh no, the snowman's in there. What am I talking about? Okay, so I can get one more Kate Atkinson, one or two in that, and then that's about it. Uh, so, what have we got? 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So let's say 35 with the spaces. Uh, so I've got 35 books away from all of this chaos, which is rubbish, really. Not terribly helpful. Um, so <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to have to get three more of these uh, these bookshelves. Uh, I wonder if I can stack one on top of the other. Again, my eye, I can't judge it. Um, up to the ceiling where it will fit. But even if not, I can make a row of them. Uh, they don't take long to put together, which is good. Um, but quite irritating, really. Um, yeah, uh, don't worry, I won't be recording uh, if I do buy more and put them together. Uh, I think the novelty has worn off after this. So there you have it. Disappointed me. My disappointed me face. Uh, Till next time, thanks very much.